Welcome to j lesson on translocation. Translocation is not that hard when you think about it and when you get the over overview of it, it's really simple. But first of all, the definition for it is um, the translation, translocation is the process of moving sugars and soluble organic substances to the other parts of the plant. For that to happen, it needs to either go up or down. So it will be traveling through the phloem. So first of all, loading the sucrose onto the phloem. So first of all, the sucrose dissolves into the water. That's the first thing. After it being photosynthesized from the source cell, Okay, source cells are where um, source cells are basically where the sucrose is loaded from. So, for example, the sucrose is loaded from a leaf cell, so therefore, a leaf cell is a source. Another source could actually be the root because the sucrose gets loaded into the root during the summer and during the winter when the plant photosynthesizes less then the sucrose is needed from the root so therefore the root becomes the source at that particular time so that dissolved um, sucrose in the water moves through the plant cells either through the apoplast pathway, so that's like moving um, along the cell walls or through the simplast pathway just going through it, to be honest, towards the companion cell. So, this is the barrier in which the leaf cell is over here and the companion cell is over here. Remember, the companion cells are directly next to the um, the sieve tube. And remember, the xylem, the phloem, and the companion cells, and some others make the vascular bundle. So, what happens is ATP is used to move the hydrogen plus ions out of the companion cell into the plant cell. Okay, against the concentration gradient because there are more hydrogen ions over here than they are here. Remember, water's got two hydrogens as well that adds to the hydrogen um, concentration. So then it moves across the proton pump through using ATP, and then, like everything, it wants to find a way to get back to the companion cells, and the only way that's going to happen is if it joins, well not joins, if it goes through this sucrose H co-transporter with sucrose. So the hydrogen kind of goes up to the sucrose hand in hand and they go through the sucrose H plus transporter. This also goes against the um, concentration gradient as well because there's a low sucrose concentration gradient here and there's a high sucrose concentration here so the sucrose is going against the concentration gradient but the H plus ion is going down the um, down the concentration gradient for hydrogen so after all that's happened we've got the high concentration here then it moves through the plasma desmata, which are the gaps in between the um, in between the the cell walls, onto the phloem. So from the phloem, the sucrose is just there, and the xylem, the water in the xylem, is detecting that. Oh, wait, hold on. That water potential inside the phloem is lower, and even though this doesn't depict it, the xylem and the phloems are quite close together. They're very close together. So, the, um, the water from the xylem would actually diffuse into the phloem um, vessel via osmosis. 
and then because of all that's happening um because obviously the water wants to equilibrate the um the water potential in both the pressure is increasing increasing all the time all the time in the flowing and because of that the con um, the pressure gradient will be low here it will be getting higher and higher and higher each time the water is moving over here so because of that steepness in that pressure gradient the sucrose with the um, with the water would move down it or it can move up it, it depends on where it is um, until we get to the sink cell see this is a proper diagram um, of translocation we've got the water moving alongside here and it's moving down it can move down the cell walls um, it can also move through the sea plates and so on and so forth until it gets to over here where facilitated diffusion takes place because there is a lower concentration of um, sucrose inside the sink cell um, or the root cell that's, that's an example of a sink cell and so it doesn't need ATP to move it there to forcefully move it there it, it's just going to do it by itself so it's going to move through facilitated diffusion all the way to um, the root cell which is a sink cell and because of that sometimes to keep to maintain this concentration gradient um, as you may because there will be a higher one here and a lower one here um, enzymes break the sucrose into glucose or fructose like for example invertase breaks sucrose down into those but there are many different enzymes which can break down the glucose into many different things and because of this happening because of the sucrose moving through the facilitated diffusion the water potential will now be rising and it may rise higher than the water potential inside the xylem because remember the xylem has still got dissolved um, solutes inside it and therefore the water will move back into the xylem in the seven in the 1970s 1980s they just I, I don't I, I don't know they were arguing whether they had um, whether plants had mass flow like come on they were arguing and we know now that mass flow is indeed the correct um, is is indeed the correct way in which the um, sugars move through the fluid, and the reason for that is that the companion cells contain more ATP than all the rest of the plant cells. Why would it need more ATP to create well more mitochondria? I mean, obviously, and it will have more ATP in effect of that mitochondria. And that is because it needs that ATP to move the hydrogen over to um, to the cell, to the plant cell, to the leaf cell. The pH of the companion cells is much higher than the rest of the other plants, and that is because it's moving, it's constantly moving the hydrogen plus ions over to the other side. So therefore, it needs to have a higher power of hydrogen, aka pH. It's also 10,000 times faster than diffusion. Therefore, it has to be mass flow. And also the phloem saps, it flows under pressure when an amphib, amphids, kind of penetrates it with its stylid. And it would, um, the foam would just flow under the pressure into the amphid's mouth, yum. And the reasons they had against it is that the it's got um, it's got a P protein and it's got no function in translocation and they were just wondering why and neither does the protein strands as well like why does it not have any um, function in the translocation and the phosphates and the sucrose moves at different rates in the same phloem 
that's these are the type of things that they they had and they were just baffed about to be honest and you need to learn that for the exam unfortunately but that is it for module two chapter six transporting plants all of ocr biology for your january exams if you're taking it in january good luck